everybody. So today we're doing something a little different. I am going to be going through the Origins Game Fair 2023 preview here on Board Game Geek. Uh, ignore all the stuff up here. I'm still learning how to do all this. But look, yeah, look at all my stuff up here. Pretty cool, huh? Anyways, so this is obviously the first time I'm doing something like this on the whole computer screen thing, so we'll see how this goes. Um, yeah, so I will be going to Origins for two days. I will technically be in town for three, but I'm doing Origins on the Thursday, Friday. Hoping to pick my badge up on Wednesday. So this is going to be the stuff that we are possibly interested in grabbing, getting, so forth and so on. This will be getting released on Friday. So if there's something you see on here that I kind of say, hey, we're kind of interested in, don't know if we're going to get for sure, and you want to see us cover it, let us know in the comments. If you want to see me do more of these things, whether I'm going to a convention or not, let me know. I, I can set a computer scroll through stuff and tell you guys. Um, I am going to say that as of right now, it is Thursday, June 15th, 7.30. They've been uploading more games today throughout the day, so there may be more that pop up after I do this. We'll probably refresh at the end and make sure there's nothing new that popped up while we went through this list. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on every game. Maybe the ones that we we already have, already played, might have some stuff on the channel for already. I'll let you know that and go a little more in-depth on those, but otherwise it'll, it should hopefully move at a relatively quick clip. I don't want this to take up a ton of your time. All right, so we will get started. So I have it sorted by publisher. There's 104 titles. You can see the view my 93. I let the bride go crazy, and she just marked everything, whether she was interested, not interested, undecided. It is madness. So ignore some of the stuff we put. We're starting with 25th Century Games. They've actually been coming out with some games that we've been enjoying lately. We have three of their games kickstarted. That's coming. Those are actually supposed to be... Demoed and or debuted at Gen Con, I'm not sure. So Blazon, so this is one that I know was kickstarted at one point, maybe by someone else, and then 25th Century grabbed it, I can't remember for sure. Heralds gather the proper devices and tinctures to blazon their shields. So this is end game bonuses, hand management, medieval, puzzle, two to four players, three to six, it's going to be 40 bucks. This is something we're interested in, I'm going to play test it, see if I think the bride and I would like playing it. Um, it does have a really cool theme of crea crafting the different colored and different emblems and heraldry on your shields. That seems pretty cool. So definitely one that I will be playtesting, checking out, seeing how it, it plays and operates. Fika. Experience the Swedish coffee culture tete-a-tete. -tete. Tete it's a two-player only card game, plays in 20 minutes, 15 bucks. We're definitely buying this one. The um, reason we don't have it as a must-have is we chose to use the must-have as ones that we already own. That way we know the must-haves we have. Um, but yes, this is one that we're getting regardless. Small card game, two-player only, low price point. I mean, worst case scenario, we don't like it. We didn't spend a ton, and we can pass it on to somebody. Um, Green Team Wins. This is a party-ish game where... Everyone has a board, you flip over a card, that everyone kind of answers how they, how they think everyone else is going to answer. Everyone who guessed the same answer, if you're a majority, you're on the green team, you score a point. If you're already on the green team, then you score two points for staying on the green team. But you, you flip-flop back and forth, depending on what your answers are and if you are, agree with the majority or not. We have interest that we're thinking about trying to get more people over for party games, but again, mainly two players, so this is going to take some thought if we actually really want to grab this one. Motor City. It's a must-have, which means we have it. Um, 25th Century Games did a sale not too long ago where you were able to get three sisters in Motor City. Both games were designed and released by this MCG. I know it says 25th Century Games, but it's also Motor City Games. Um, we played three sisters, really enjoyed it, lots of comboing read through the rules of Motor City. It changes it slightly because now you have this board with dice and drafting and there's grids. I haven't quite gotten this one played yet, but it is on the top of the list to play. Seems really intriguing. Um, 
they have a lot of cool stuff. They actually also have a game on Kickstarter now called French Quarter, where you're visiting down in New Orleans. And same thing, you're going to be rolling dice or going on cards and all that kind of mitigates and goes crazy things and combos and moves this. Um, they call it their loaded roll and right because they are kind of, a lot of thought goes into it, combos and a lot of extra mechanisms. They're really nice. Prehistories Evolution, it's an expansion for prehistories. We've never played prehistories, so not interested for now. Maybe, and then it's got auction, sealed bid. We're not huge fans of auction or bluffing games. Uh, as you can see, auction bidding, raw, not interested. Oh, resist, on the way, not interested. Boop! There we go, sorry. So raw, not interested. We did watch a playthrough of raw. It just didn't strike the bride as a game that she would enjoy playing. So, not interested. I will say, the gameplay does seem smooth if you are into auctioning games. I've heard this 25th century edition, they really upped it, brought it, modernized it, made sure it looked nice and not all dated, because it is an older game. Um, but yeah, it just it's not for us, but definitely looked like a cool game. Resist. So this is a solo-only lead a band of resistance fighters as they try to take back their homeland. Card play, conflict, resolution, deck bag and pool bending, card game, civil war. I'm mainly interested in it for myself. Um, I have been playing more solo games, as you've seen on the channel. So it kind of seemed like a maybe an interesting one to kind of give a go. See how that solo only is. And it's a relatively lower price point. Again, nice barrier of entry. Hey, lower level price point. If there's a lot of meat in the game, you get your money's worth. Um, Space Explorers expansion, or Age of Ambition. Expansion for Space Explorers. Again, we've never played Space Explorers, so I'm not, I'm not interested. Although it does have open drafting set collection, so maybe we want to look at Space Explorers. Mm, yeah, you know, let's move that to interested. Splitto, three to eight players. Players cooperate to score points, but only the one who scores the most wins the game. Alliances, simultaneous action selection, card game. So even though this is more than two, and typically we don't gravitate towards that, this kind of seems small. Ah, well, I guess we're going to go look at this. Yeah, let's look at some stuff. All right, uh, now I justify why I clicked on there. Um, it seems small enough and probably simple enough that the youth will probably play this and just sit down and play a simple card game with us. Um, so that's kind of why that one's circled there. Uh, Volanimo. Climb the hills on your bicycle to claim the Petis Puikerates. Basically, the carrot jersey. Um, we must have. We have this. We've played it. Um, it's, pre it's pretty decent at two-player. You basically have a hand of cards in your hand, and it's a card-shedding game, so you're playing cards down. And it's got an interesting thing where the numbers are one through, I think, seven. If you play one card down, it's its face value. Then you can play either sets of the same color or same number. And then what you do in that instance is each card is worth ten, and then your lowest value gets added on. So if you play a 1 and a 6, it's 21. Kind of cool, just ladder climbing going up. We do enjoy that one. If we didn't already have it, that would definitely be one that I'd be picking up. I will now take a small drink break as I'm enjoying Magners while I do this. Drink responsibly, and only if you're of age. All right, 3WS Games, which I believe is Third World Studio. Um, Charcuterie the Board Game. This is just a demo. It's an I Cut You Choose. I don't know if we've really ever played one, the bride and I. Um, sometimes on a, in a two-player setting, those aren't always the greatest. So I'll be interested to see how this one plays in an I Cut You Choose and set collection. And, and come on, meats, cheeses, food. I enjoy meat, cheeses, and food. Um, a little more details. You take turns crafting delectable food tiles and arranging them on your board, but carefully consider your placements as you'll be judged on your final presentation. Um, so that collection, all that stuff seems nifty. Um, mission control, critical orbit. A limited quality will be able to purchase each day. Cooperative game, simultaneous action selection. Why are we put not interested? 
Um, oh, real time, right there. I do not like real time games typically. There are always exceptions to the rules, but if it sees real time, I immediately kind of more hesitant on it. So the real time aspect is why we have this is not interested. Stuff of Legend. So this is a really cool looking production, really cool looking game. We are not interested because of the three player player count. It's going to be hard for us to get the youth to play anything with us, especially if it's a longer game, more in depth. That and the whole fact that there may be a hidden trader kind of puts the bite off of it as well. But if it wasn't for those things, if we enjoyed those things, we'd definitely get this. The theme, it's, um, I know Platt has stuffed fables. This kind of seems like a darker stuffed fables. You have the boogeyman, and everything's got a little bit more of that darker, sinister tone to it. It looked really cool. All right, now we're on to All Play. It used to be known as BoardGameTables.com. First up, we have Big Top. So, auction, bidding, three to four players. Not interested for us, unfortunately. But, but again, that's why we're not interested. That may all sound good to y'all. If so, pick it up. All Play does usually do some pretty good productions and kind of... They're those ones that it's like a simplified game with interesting choices, especially in these small box, which when you see the $19 price point, that's what that is. It's, you know, really small, a lot of game in a small package. Fiction. Um, we've done an unboxing of this. That will be debuting three days from when I release this video. So the Monday of Origins is an unboxing of Fiction. So Brian and I just recently played this. Um, it was okay. The It's hard to wrap yourself around that you're lying about one of the letters, so you have to try and figure out the most optimal way to try and figure out what letter is being lied about. Um, it really it bogged down for us because we didn't use the timer. Um, there's two or you're supposed to set a 10 minute timer. So the game says 20 minutes, I would say more like 30, because you pause timer when the librarian checks the things. But yes, you can set a 10-minute timer, and then for each half of the game, they have a 10-minute timer or five guesses. We chose not to use a timer because the bride doesn't work really good with the timer, and we're going to just kind of enjoy the game at a leisurely pace. You're going to need the timer if you play with it. Um, she had a hard time thinking of five-letter words. And, it, I mean, when you're put on the spot like that, sometimes it happens, and it just, that one lies, so you're trying to wrap your head around all of that. It's an interesting game. It's going to be for some. Others are not going to be a f fan of it. We thought it was okay. Um, not one of our initial ones we're going to go to often, but we, we still want to try it with the youth to see maybe if they like it. Pollen by uh, Reiner Knizia. This is one of their bigger box, hence the $39 price point. Um, it seems a little interesting. You got the pollinators, you got the cool flowers, you're laying out cards, the um, enclosed the pollinators to score points, and it just it seems like it's got some nice table presence and interesting mechanics. This is one I'll probably be play testing before we pick up to see if it's gonna fit for us. Roll of the top journeys, not interested. I Backed a Kickstarter of this before 25th Century Games took it over and made the lavish productions. And we had tried it, and it just didn't work for us, the spatial puzzle. So, unfortunately, that's why I put us as not interested. But if you like the roll and writes where you're trying to move the, the numbers up and optimize things, it, it, it's worth it. Dubious, we're on to Arcane Wonders. Dubious. Role-playing, storytelling, card game, deduction. So three to six players. I mean, that's not necessarily an automatic turnoff for us right away. But it would take a lot to bring us in. In this one, you basically get uh, a, a character type, and you have to come up with a story for the character and try and get the majority of the players to guess their occupation in secret that creative it's that role playing it's you know get into it so this is why i think it's going to be better with bigger groups or if you're creative 
and that's just not us in the way we like to play the games. So that is the main reason why we are not interested. Furnace, Interbellum, an expansion for Furnace. Well, expansion, but we do have Furnace. We put not interested because we don't enjoy the two-player experience of Furnace that much. We'll play it every now and then, but the two-player version itself is a little lacking for what we like to play, so we don't really want to necessarily put in more money into a game that's just okay for us. Gap. Small little card game. We're going to grab it. It's small. It's got cards, set collection. Bride likes card games. So this was a no-brainer. Mother of Frankenstein. Playtime, 600 to 900 minutes. So this one we are interested in. And it sounds really cool, but this is one that we have to put some serious thought into because the price point is lofty. Um, I think if you order online, it's, it's uh, hold on, I can pull that up for you. Where'd it go? Right here. So I like that. And go to there. So you'll look right now. Um, purchase Mother of Frankenstein. If you order it online right now, it's on sale for $120 for three volumes, $155 if you want the novel. So the cool thing about this is if you look down here, over the course of the game, you'll also build a 500-piece 2D puzzle and a 350-piece 3D puzzle, ending up with a gorgeous recreation of Frankenstein's castle you can keep forever. And the whole thing, it's basically escape room and narrative choices and puzzles and figuring things out. And it sounds phenomenal, but that price point, it it's a lofty investment when it's sometimes hard for us to get games played. And when this is a 10 to 15 hour experience, that means we have to block out a huge chunk of time and you're not going to want to play a little bit and then come back to it later because you're going to want to immerse yourself in the story and make sure you remember stuff and not have to go back. So it's definitely one that we are really interested in, but we're really trying to decide if we can devote the time and money to doing it. Because this is an undertaking if someone takes it on. BA Games. Forges of Ravenshire. Contracts, dice rolling, dice, fantasy. Grab a hammer and some steel. So it's played over four seasons four seasons of rounds. Each starts with a gathering phase where you acquire contracts, guild members, resources. Then they roll their dice workers and place one of them on an available location. Retrieve a different dice worker, gather even more resources. Kind of that um, Raiders of the North Sea mechanic, it sounds like. We have actually backed this on Kickstarter, wrapped up not too long ago. I'm pretty I think they might be taking late pledges now. Um when we were able to back it, we didn't have the funds to back it for the full game itself. So it's kind of nice. It's going to be at Origins. We're going to go, or I'm going to go, kind of play test it, see it in in uh, real life, and see if we want to up it. I have a feeling we're going to up it and get the full game. But it's going to be nice that we can kind of have, I can kind of go and see it and make sure. Bezier Games. Um, Castles of Mad King Ludwig. So we are kind of interested. Neither one of us has ever played the game before. Um, one of those ones that's kind of just slipped under our radar. Kind of heard about it. Haven't really looked into it. Saw it here with the second edition. Kind of watched a uh, learn to play kind of teach from uh, before you play. Um, so I'm going to take a look at it. See if it's going to be as cool as it looks and if we're going to enjoy it as much. Maglev Maps, Volume 1 for Maglev Metro. We do have Maglev Metro. We've played it here and there. Um, we don't enjoy it enough necessarily to get more maps, um, but the production is stellar. It, it's, a, it's lofty for a maps volume, but if you look to see what you all get, you get a bunch of new maps, you get a bunch of new meeples. You, it just, it's almost like a ton of new games in general. So it, it, it's worth it, the price to me in my head, if we were going to get it. It's like, yeah, it's 100 because you're getting screen printed meeples for the expansions for stuff you already had. You're getting all these extra boards, and these are like double, triple layered, tri triple layered boards at times. And it's, 
It's an outstanding production. It's just not a game that we gravitate towards. So, so Scram, she initially was interested in it, and then just was like, yeah, no, never mind, not interested, because it's memory. She doesn't have the greatest memory. It's three to six players. Don't know if the youth would play it, so she's kind of leaned towards not interested. Who knows, I'm going to be at the booth anyways looking at Mass Castles of Mad King Ludwig, so I'll probably, maybe, take a gander at Scram, see what it's like. Black Labrador Creations. Loyalty or Liberty? Um, we put not interested. It's a campaign, battle card driven, revolutionary war. We assume the role, the role of generals in a tactical war game. Neither one of us is into war games. The theme just isn't there for us, so not interested. All right. La Boite des Jeux. I don't know. I don't speak French. But this game is Tribes of the Wind. Must have. Guess what? We have it. We've done an unboxing of it. Um, this is a game where you are playing cards from your hand, and based on possibly the cards of your neighbors, it gets better and better, or you can't even play it at all if your neighbors are there. But you're playing these cards and doing all these actions because you have a map in front of you, so you're trying to clear away the pollution, get villages out, move your wind riders on there to populate the villages and fulfill like goals and contracts on the side to get the most points. We enjoyed it. It's got some cool mechanisms. I just I don't know about the replayability. I feel like I've almost maxed out my score both times we've played. Maybe we're just playing it differently than intended to where we're just trying to get everything. We're just doing everything. I don't know. It's just us playing, so I don't know. Well, I mean, it, it, it's a really cool game. It looks stunning. It's got great production. It's got, like I said, that cool mechanic of looking at the neighbors. The two-player variant is actually, there's really no variant. It's just instead of having two neighbors, the pile of cards in the middle that's face down that you're normally drawing cards from, that's your neighbor. So when you're comparing your neighbors, you look at that, and you look at your at your other player, and that's it. That's the two players, so... It plays just as smooth at two as at five, I'm sure. It just five is probably longer. Bear and Bread from Capstone Games. Must have. We have it. Pretty sure I did an unboxing of it. Um, this is a two-player only game. You have a map between you, and it's a drafting cards game to where you're trying to get your ingredients to be able to make bear and bread. Uh, it's got that interesting scoring mechanism where... You're going to count up how many points you have in bear, how many points you have in bread. Whatever of those two is lowest is your score. So you can't just go heavy into bread or heavy into bear and expect to win. you got to try and balance it out. Um, but yes, the, the, it's interesting because the drafting you do is you start off and you draft a card and back and forth, typical drafting. And then when you, But it's multi-use cards, so you can put them down for resources, you can make the bear bread recipe on it, or you can tuck them under the board for special actions. Well, any of the cards you use to get resources, when the next part of that round hits, you pick those up, you refill up your hand, and then you use those cards. It, it's really cool, it's really interesting the way it plays out, and the way you have to manage your resources... And the other thing I didn't even mention is it's limited resources each round based on if it's, I think, summer or winter. It's basically different seasons, or fertile and not fertile harvest. So, like, the one one round, you have a bunch of stuff out there. Next round, there's not as much. So, if you grab the stuff before the other person, they don't even get anything. So, like I said, really interesting two-player game. If you're two-player only people and you kind of like that kind of thinky and drafting games and managing resources... This is definitely one to grab and pick up. We, we enjoyed the fact that I got this for us. Joan of Arc, Orion's Draw and Write. This is one that I'm going to, again, play test, kind of see how it operates. It seems like it's got some of that chaining roll and write goodness we like, but I just want to see it in person. Wandering Towers has some memory aspect to it. So the bride is interested because it sounds really cool and you have these 3D towers that you're going and getting put on top of people's workers and wizards and they got to remember where those are. But that's why I'm not sure if we're going to like it. 
Um, next game from Czech Games Edition. Krutnohora, the City of Silver. Um, hmm, we have not interested on this one. Uh, city building, economic, medieval. Each round, players take turns selecting actions from a hand of double-sided cards. I'm not sure why we put as not interested in this one. Hmm. I don't remember. Well, let's go and put interest in. Let me take a gander at that one. Lost Runes of Arnak, The Missing Expeditions. We have Lost Runes of Arnak. I enjoy it. It's got worker placement. I enjoy the Bride Enjoys. It's got deck building. The Bride Enjoys that. It's got a track that you can run up. I like tracks. This one adds two new leaders and a solo and two-player campaign and more. So that's intriguing. I like playing games solo lately. Solo mm -hmm. campaign. I have room where I could do that on our schedule. Or even a two-player campaign, maybe the bride and I can take that on. Alright, now we're at the Dietz Foundation. Littoral Commander, Indo-Pacific. Simple to resolve, modern military conflict in Asia, war game, already said we aren't fans of those. Sharks, become a shark and eat your favorite sea creature for the best chance of survival. Um... I think for this one, it's because it's basically put it as a kid's game. Um, not like we shy away from kid's games. There are some enjoyable ones that we that we do play. I think it's just kind of, it seemed, I don't know, I, I want to say basic. It just kind of seemed like it wasn't necessarily going to interest us enough that we'd want to grab it. Dolphin Hat Games, 800 Pound Gorilla. I put is not interested because players are in jungles rounded. Um, spin the spinner to determine the gameplay. If the spinner lands on a gorilla, quickly find the right size gorilla. This usually never ends up well when we try and play this. And it's a 3 to 6, which means we got to grab the youth. Although a lot of dolphin hats are, because they're the ones who do taco, cat, goat, cheese, pizza, which the kid really enjoys. The youth. But this just, one just with the spinner and just the frantic grabbing just didn't. They didn't intrigue me at all. Elf Creek Games, Atlantis Rising, Monstrosities. Expansion for Atl Atlantis Rising, we don't have that, so not interested. Honey Buzz, Fall Flavors. I'm going to put Undecided on that one. We haven't rated that one yet, but we have Honey Buzz. We've played it a couple times. We've somewhat enjoyed it. This adds a bunch of modules that may improve the gameplay, so I'll take a, a look at it when I'm there to see if it's something that we want to add to our version. Paradox Initiative is must have. We have backed this on Kickstarter. We are waiting to receive it. Um, they have had some production issues and some things that have slowed them down, but they're uh, working on getting that resolved. Can't wait for this one. It seems really cool. You're basically managing like this weird timeline and trying to collect this stuff. Um, there's a bunch of different races and they've grabbed a bunch of different artists to do each one, so each one has its own flair and feel, and that's just really cool about it. Santa's Workshop, this is, uh, they're doing a demo, you can pre-order it now, this is the second edition of this game, so we are interested, um, because there's really not that many good Christmas games out there, so we want a good Christmas game, kind of like Billy Madison, he never saw a blue duck before, and he wants to see a blue duck, so he colored that duck blue. I want a good Christmas game, so let's go and see if this is a good Christmas game. There you go. Um, oh, that's right. The bride did this one. We're going to move that over to interest. All right, so 16 candies, Envy Born. So this company has these four games, and they all sound like they have a decent, cool mechanic. Mechanics in them, 16 candies, three to four players. It looks like it's a basic little small hand management, highest, lowest scoring. So you're just basically drawing and moving all these candies around. Trying to get stuff done. The game ends when only one player has candy left. So, seems like quick, simple, easy card game where we can get the youth to play with us. Defrag. So it's a one to two players, 15 to 25 minutes, and you have to defrag your computer by solving a grid-style puzzle. That sounds like a cool one-player experience that I want to do. Mind Your Business. So this is the one that they do have for sale. Chaining, co-op, 
Um, in each mode, so there's a solo, a cooperative, and competitive rule set. In each mode, you will take action on your turn and manipulate the game board and attempt to align chains of resources so that they may be collected once your mine card is aligned with them. You will do this by swapping, rotating, revealing different resource cards that make up the game board. So it just had that cool moving cards around, co-op, pattern building, there's a competitive as well, a solo. It's, a, it's everything all in one. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. We'll check it out. Twenty-five dollars doesn't seem too bad, based on maybe what I'll I'll see what it looks like and see if it's if it might be worth that to grab and bring home for the channel. Sirens. So this is a one to two player as well. Opposing sirens work against each other, lure sailors to their side of the cove. Drafting, hand management, card game, all that stuff we enjoy. So why not grab that? Right, one to two players. We play two. There we go. First fish games. Mistwind. Build efficient trade networks with your transport, whales, and outposts. Air movement, hand management, transportation. Strategic game of building outposts to create networks and allow your transport whales to move around more efficiently. Players will have a hand of action. Discs numbered 1 to 5, but at the beginning of every round, you must choose 1 to discard and not use for that round. The game board will have 4 sections. So that just... Pick up, deliver, work replacement, not work around, route building, stuff that we enjoy. Sounds like an interesting theme. And whales flying in the sky just sounds pretty funny. All right, Gigamic, Galapagos, big box. Lose a turn, bluffing, negotiation, three and up. Not interested. Kowali, Awali, not sure how you pronounce it. Distribute pebbles on the path and try to line up four pebbles of your color. So this kind of has a Moncala aspect. You're going to have these discs. You're going to put them, put one on top of a disc, and then you're going to drop them out Moncala, trying to get, as they said, uh, four of your color in a row. That's it. Simple abstract strategy game. Has some really nice, big, chunky, wood-looking components. Book of Villainy. Commit Silly Crimes is a B-list villain. Write a book about it. Modular board, set collection, card game. Two to four. One of the lower price points. We said that looks pretty nifty. And the theme sounds pretty funny. You move around various locations in Rondell fashion, collecting sets of henchmen to complete chapters for your book. You score points by collecting chapters with certain themes and arranging the chapters of your book in ascending order. Once any player completes their book, the game ends. Seems simple enough. In case you didn't see recently, we did Books of Time. That's writing books, too. Apparently, we want to write a book some, high, some way, somehow. Guerrilla Games, Battle Stations, Dirt Side, Co-op, Dice Rolling, Miniatures, Science Fiction, Large Price Point, not interested. Um, yeah, I think it's just, it seems like one of those more lifestyle games that we're just not going to want to take on. Grand Gamers Guild, alright, so you have Ahau Eclipse, which is an expansion for Ahau here. A um, little bit of a higher price point, so it's one that we definitely want to kind of look at. It's one to five players, 90 to 120 minutes, a little longer. But some of the components on this, if you haven't seen them, uh, let's pull this up really quick. Come on, there we go. Just like these cool towers, and so the production looks phenomenal, and that's why we definitely want to take a gander at it. It, it seems like it may be a really cool looking game. Artemis Odyssey, um, what was it, oh, I think with her, this kind of had a programming aspect where everyone's kind of putting down cards face down in a row, and then you flip them over and then do the actions going down the row, and that just, she didn't seem thrilled with that, that wasn't something she was looking forward to wanting to do, so that's why we pass on that one. Um, Artemis Project is an expansion for the Artemis Project, which we do not have or have played, Holiday Hygiene 7, the Turkey Trial. We're interested. So this is Small Escape Room, 18 cards. This is a series that Grand Gamers Guild does where they have the different holidays and do these escape rooms. So there's a Christmas one, Valentine's, um, I think 4th of July, there's a patriotic one. And so we want to give it a go. I actually should move this must-have because I backed their um, campaign for Ternanog and you were able to add this on in the pledge manager for that, which I already have. All right, great games. 
Um, Hatchet brings these games over here to us. The U.S., us, us, us. Uh, so they have Rauha. Uh, return life to sterile planets using your shamanistic powers. This is a must-get for us. I've watched some playthroughs. It seems cool. You're putting cards on your board, and you're activating rows and columns, and you're doing stuff. This is from the same people that brought us Ned of Valir, and we really enjoy Ned of Valir. So this is basically a must-get that we're going to grab. Um, we did a pre-order with um, Hatchet. Got some games early. We're picking some games up there. I'm a little annoyed I didn't put this in on that order. But they're probably going to be one of the first ones I hit the Hatchet booth to make sure I get the games I need to pick up and get these other games because they have a few that I'm interested in. Yes. Anyways, so that's that one. Resurgence. We have this one. So this is from Half a Kingdom Games. Um, it is kind of a post-apocalyptic world, I believe. You have mutants running around, but it's a bag builder. So you have your bag, and you're putting in workers, and those workers can go to only, only, or they can go anywhere on the maps, depending on where you assign them, but only certain workers can go to certain locations. So at the end, at the beginning of your turn, you kind of put the board up, and then you assign your, your little discs to the different areas, you lift it up, you move down a leadership track, and then you assign those workers going back and forth to the area on the map that you did. There's like the, the dock, there's the city, and then there's your bunker. Um, I did a unboxing of this on the channel, so feel free to look at that as well. Um, all of my Origins games that we've looked at or done something with, I have a playlist on the channel, so you can just boop, clock, look in there, and see all the different games and videos we've done. Glom. One to six players, a quick-witted party word game with a clever objective scoring system. It's weird that there's a party game with a solo mode, but hey, I can party on myself. Party by yourself. Anyways. This one basically has three decks. You flip over the cards, and it shows you something you need to do. Like, it might be like, redo this phrase without using the letter T and such and such. Um, Dice Tower did a playthrough of this that we kind of watched, and it's not anything close to what we enjoy as a couple of trying to do. Way too much abstract weird thought, and it, it's going to be one of those ones that it, it's funner in a bigger group as you get the silliness going with everyone. Earth. All right, this was a huge hotness for a while. We have quite a bit on our channel for it. We have an unboxing. We have us playing through it. We have me playing through it solo. We enjoy this game a lot. It's got a little bit of that engine building because what's going to happen is there's four different colored actions you can choose. When you choose that action, you then activate all cards that have that color on them. When your opponent does it, again, you get to activate those cards. It, it's just a lot of a lot of cool stuff just cascades down your board as you're doing it. Stunning artwork. Really cool pieces as you're doing the growth trees. It actually like builds up and you have a canopies with different colors. It's one that if you don't want to buy, fine, but make sure you at least play it once or twice. It, it's an enjoyable game. We, we've enjoyed it quite a bit. Keymaster Game is Chicken. We have Must Have. We've yet to receive it. It should be coming soon because we did back their Kickstarter. Dice rolling, press your luck. We have the Deluxe Edition coming, which actually is going to have like Fences and craziness. It looks really cool. Kids Table BG. Diced Veggies. So this game is pretty pretty cool story behind it. I believe it was their one of their kids and then their cousin. And then the dad kind of helped fine-tune it. But this was basically like a family affair to make this game. You have the dice. You're creating recipes. And you have a cleaver. Let's see, do they have it? And there we go. So you can have this little cardboard cleaver. You have the dice rolled. And you need them to fulfill these um, recipes and orders. But you basically put the cleaver down. And then push the dice off. And so you're, you're dicing out your veggies. And cutting out the stuff you need. To try and fulfill these orders. So I, I thought that was just a really cool component. Really cool mechanic with it. Um, we... Have this as a must-have because we 
um, back their game, Maple Valley, and they had this as an optional add-on. So this will be coming to us already. Last night games. These were two that were just added today, like an hour and a half ago. Um, Galaxy Rush is a car drafting, engine building, set collection, Collecting strategic race across the galaxy, two player only. So because of all that alone, we're interested. That's it. That, that's all we needed. Horticulture is a plan your own garden and score points for planting according to your plan. One to ten players. Um, this is uh, flipping right, rolling right, whichever. Basically, you have a plan that you're going to have for your garden. Then I believe you're flipping a card in the middle, and then whoever did it chooses one of the things to plant in the, in the garden, and everyone draws it in somewhere. Um, kind of like if you play Tiny Towns by um, AEG, kind of same thing. I am going to grab glass, so then everyone has to grab glass and put it on their little town. It's, I believe, that same kind of thought mechanic. Um, Ludimus Games. We're sinking! A social survival game on the high seas filled with action, backstabbing, and loot. So betting... Bluffing, bluffing, backstabbing, three to six players equals not interested for this couple. Astra by Mind Clash Games. So Mind Clash Games is known for their big, heavy thought, like anachrony, these big things. This seems like a more, this is a, more simple than those, this is a, um, Kind of a, it's not even a really roll and write game. But you have the dry erase cards, and you're using your stardust to mark stars on these cards to try and get them to score points, and then some of them have actions, and you put that there, and then you have the actions that can help you maybe do more stars and get the stardust, and it's all about just marking these cards, these constellations, and getting them in front of you for points. And then even if you don't win the card, as long as you have stuff on there, you get a boon that's listed on the bottom to help you in the future. It has a really cool looking production, so it's one that we are, I want to see in person and make sure that it's what we're thinking it is. But that is one I'll probably end up getting. Perseverance, Castaway Crackles, Episodes 3 and 4. Well, we never played 1 or 2, so not interested right now. Um, even though it doesn't say it's a expansion... It's kind of that whole, um, are two medium heavy thematic Euro games concluding the story of time lost survivors on Dinosaur Island. Each episode is playable in a standalone game or in the crackle mode it ties four games, one with each episode into a continuous story. As a hallmark of the Perseverance series, each episode features many unique characteristics and a very distinct game feel, but their core mechanism and concepts are similar, making each new episode much easier to learn. So that sounds pretty cool. Maybe we'll eventually kind of come into looking at this, but we've not done one or two, so it's not something we want to jump into in the middle. I may take a quick look at them to kind of see what that core mechanic and game and all that is, and maybe if they have one and two there, I can see how that, those are and maybe start there, and then maybe we'll become interested in three and four. What do they actually say is the weight? I know we, don't, we can't always go, that. there is no weight there. Let's, yeah, I'm taking this down a wormhole. Uh, let's go to Mind Clash. Nope, nope, nope. There we go. Let's go one and two. 4.26 out of five. That scares the bejesus out of me. The bejiggles. That is, yeah. 4.26 out of five. Holy jeez. All right. That scared me. I'm scared. The one hold me. Oh, my bottle will hold me. Thank you, thank you, bottle. Nerdy Pup Games! Super Squad High! Teen superheroes manage their hero life balance to unmask a hidden villain. So this is one the bride wants me to look at. Because I'm like, really? When you look at... Where? Tense, thematic gameplay. Manage your time between schoolwork, fighting crime, and forming relationships with your classmates. Like, alright... So they're going to be in Gaming Hall C, so I'm going to see if I can try and find them, since they don't have like a booth set up, per se. Uh, but this is one that we want to kind of demo and see, and maybe um, if it's a coming to Kickstarter soon type of thing, then we might back it. 
Obscure Reference Games has Overlords of Infamy and an expansion for it. So we put it as Interested, but this is another one. It's got Take That, which we're not overly fond of, but it's got the humor, which we like, but it's got a price point that kind of makes us have to stop and analyze, is it a type of game that we're going to want to spend that money on? Is it going to is it going to be one of those ones where the humor is like, all right, we played it once, we got the humor, we're good, we're out? Or is it one that the game itself is going to just really grasp you in and, and bring you into as well? Paverson Games, distilled, unboxed, done. Uh, must have, we have this. When I'd seen it on Kickstarter, it was about making booze and liquor and stuff, and I enjoy booze and liquor and stuff. So, and... What Paverson Games has done with this first one, and sounds like they're doing with this Luthier, which we have interest in, I want to go and demo this one, is they really know how to instill the theme into the game. And what you're doing in the game matches the theme. Like, why are you doing this? Oh, because when you're brew, you have this part that you normally take off anyways, and that's why when you shuffle in, you remove a card. It's to simulate that. So they really looked at the theme. How does this work in real life, and how do we make the theme match it? So Distilled really does shine. It, it's a game that, if you want that kind of like income, hand management, just maneuvering stuff around, it, it's worth your time. And the, like I said, the production is stellar. So I'm really interested in Luthier because this is crafting musical instruments for, patron, for patrons. And you have um, Bach, Mozart, Beethoven. So they're trying to incorporate the history too. This is going to be their second game. I am going to keep a close eye on Paverson if distilled is any indication. They, they're going, they take time and care with their designs. Praetorian board games, I believe. Castlescape. So this is deck building, and you're actually building like little walls and castles on the map with these little cubes, and you're putting your cubes on top of there to like uh, stake your claim to them. This one has a nice table presence, so I want to see if the gameplay matches the table presence. Is this one? So, like, right here, those are all 3D pieces. So, yeah, I want to see if the gameplay is going to live up to our expectation with that. Linkto! Share your knowledge to match clues and illustrate cards about food or travel. Small little card game. 1 to 10. Only 13 bucks. Hatchet Booth, because it's from Randolph and they're doing it through Hatchet. So we'll probably grab these. Just keep on hand. And The Bride Likes Trivia. Miller Zoo. This is one that we pre-ordered through them. That, that I for sure will be picking up when I'm there. This is a co-op game. Miller Zoo is a real zoo in, I believe, was it Vancouver? Just as can as I can't remember exactly where. But you take your people in the zoo, and you're going to be playing cards, and you guys are all going to be working together to stop these calamities and these bad things from happening, but also taking care of the animals and getting them into different pens and such. So it just, it sounded really cool, had a good theme. Um, I believe they actually have like a campaign with it, and that that's a very approachable price point for how, how good the game looks. Restoration Games, Return to Dark Tower. I'll be honest with you. This is what play is not interested for us because we're not going to play it enough for us to justify us spending that money on it. The reason it's like that, though, is they have a really great app. The tower itself is all Bluetooth compatible, electronic. It moves, it pops, it lights up. It does crazy stuff. Um, there's a campaign mode. You get all these minis. Like, it's a phenomenal production and worth that price, in my opinion, but we're not going to play enough for us to to buy it. Um, if we just had the money to throw willy-nilly around just to have a game to have it on the shelf to play every, maybe we'll get around to it. That would be one of the games we'd be grabbing, but unfortunately it's just not one that we can swing right now. Thunder Road Vendetta. She never actually said anything about this one. I'm going to put it as interested. It's crazy. Death racing, smashing cars into each other. Madness. I'm going to take a look at it, see if she would actually like it. This does a, kind of fall into that, kind of take that, doing mean things to your, your opponent that we aren't a big fan of. But maybe it's one that is actually enough that we can get 
the youth to play, and then we can just tag team them and destroy them. Yeah, it's mean, I know. All right, next up we have the Unmatched series. Um, we actually did the, like, the play testing on Unmatched before it was released, and it, the mechanics of it don't suit us. We like, because you play the cards, but one of your actions might be just to draw cards, and when you're living on the actions and trying to do the strategic mo maneuvering, and then you just have to draw cards to get them, and then you don't even get that many when you do it, it wasn't one that we enjoyed and, and liked. We do have a version. We have the Buffy the Vampire Slayer one because she loves Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But we may play it. Don't know, but we at least have it on our shelves. They have the Marvel line coming. Would be cool to get those, but again, it would just take up room on the shelf and we wouldn't be playing them. Restoration Games, I will say, does phenomenal stuff. They're, all their games look and feel great. They just aren't for us, unfortunately. But uh, trust me, if there's a company I'd say that you could probably trust its restoration games. But this Unmatched Adventures is basically turning Unmatched into a cooperative campaign game. They had just done a Kickstarter for this, so they're doing the demos. Then here's some Marvel stuff. Rio Grande Games. So, three to five players, train game, not interested. This one, six and up, so this is like your very intro board games, play with your, like, you know, kindergarten for second grade kids so that's why we have not interested not because it doesn't look good just not for us seas of strife three to six players it's a trick taking game but you try to avoid taking tricks and that drives the bride nuts if it's a trick taking game she wants to take tricks that's what a trick taking game is for her so if you're having you're telling her she can't take tricks she does not like the game so that's why it's not interested and then wall bash Cannonball, again, a train game, auction, bidding, all of that, not interested. Le Scorpion Mask. Flashback, zombie kids. So this is kind of that one where I'm, this one is made for kids, but we're interested because the whole, it's cooperative, it's these narrative choices, you have the cards, and it's like, oh, if you want to look closer here, go to zero five, so you've got the next card, and you're trying to solve these puzzles by looking at all these different clues, and that sounded really cool for us, one that maybe we can just throw on the table play while we're eating dinner or something. Turing Machine. This is one that we are picking up at the show for sure. Already pre-ordered it. So Turing Machine. Um, crack codes using a real analog computer. So this is one where you actually have the stuff put in. They have the holes and it's this whole puzzly deduction trying to figure it out. Sounded really cool. She really wanted it so we ordered it. Zero to 100. The general knowledge game for generally unknowledgeable. So I believe this is the one where they basically get asked a question, and then you have to see whoever gets closest to the number. That's it. You may not need to know the answer, but you, if, as long as you know around where the answer is as opposed to the others, then you're good. So that's why we put us interested, kind of this lower price point, just have it on hand for when a bunch of people are over. Sky Kingdoms, the Isofarian Guard, not interested because it's that campaign Lifestyle type game, large price point, we won't get it to the table to actually enjoy the entirety of what it is. Smirk and Dagger games. So these are three, these are the other ones that have been put up brand new recently, like as in today. Adventure Party is currently on Kickstarter. It's got a really cool theme and mechanics behind it, but it's a three to eight, and kind of like that one earlier I had said, Dubious by Arcane Wonders. This kind of relies on the one person who's saying stuff to be creative and trying to really convey their message, and we don't excel at those types of games. Um, this one basically is, everyone's got a little screen, uh, someone gets challenged with an adventure, they roll, no one can see their die result, they have to describe that die result and how something happened, and then everyone has to try and guess what the die result is. Like I said, really cool sounding if that is something up your area where you can just sit around with people and they're really good at telling stories and talking and all that, this is the game for you. They also have a tier where you can get these specially class-specific dice made by Gatekeeper Games, and those dice look phenomenal. We almost wish we could, we might be able to just get those dice. Hmm. Anyways, but though, yeah, it, that game looks really cool. But Hexed, an unconventional deck-building game of Arcane Combat, Deck building had us until we saw that it's a three to five player. 
the youth won't play a deck building game because it's usually, oh, I don't know what to do, and the game's long, and I don't want to build up. They need quick action. Just keep going. Keep them amused. Um, so that's why that's not interesting. Boop is interesting. So I know Boop's been out. It's one that, again, we've kind of looked. So the bride used to say, I don't like abstract strategy games. So if I saw an abstract strategy game, nope, I don't want it. Rai was interested in Kowali. That's an abstract strategy game. So I never looked at Boop. She's like, oh, that looks interesting. So now I am going to be going to look at Boop. And maybe Boop itself. Because, yeah. Yeah. And then you have Smirk and Laughter games, which is basically Smirk and Daggers, like the slightly more take-that-meaner games. Smirk and Laughter is kind of like the lighter-hearted, more um, enjoyable games by that same company. This is Tesseract. This was on Kickstarter. This is another one where they had a level where all the dice were metal dice and looked beautiful and shiny, but you couldn't just get the dice, and the game wasn't one that really struck us. So that is unfortunately why we have is not interested. But if you can get those metal dice, those look beautiful. Sophisticated Cerberus Games, The Stifling Dark. So this one was on Kickstarter. We missed that Kickstarter somehow. I mean, I'm on Kickstarter all the time. Somehow I missed it. But it's this deduction, hidden movement, horror-themed. You're using your flashlights, moving around. We have interested purely for basically the theme and the way the game looks. She really digs that. Sorry, we are French. So Galileo Project. So this is set in the Ganymede universe. So if you've played Ganymede, it's in the same universe. Um, this is one where you're basically getting cards, and you have the four moons, and you're pushing your... Um, tokens up on there to do certain things and have robots and we've done an unboxing just so you know it, it's an interesting game it's got some cool thought behind it we haven't played it enough for me to really form an opinion on it but it is one i do want to try and play a couple more times because it did at least intrigue me when we played it go to x so this is hand management open drafting card game um so it's a two-player game combo card game um it's basically you have a bunch of different clans you each choose three to put together and then the two unchosen ones change the game rule played over three rounds this is one that I need to look at first because it sounds like you're playing maybe combat against each other and we aren't always big on that but some of the other mechanics sound cool so that's like I said that's nothing that we're gonna have to I want to check out first but it is one that's a little higher on our list of more than likely we're gonna get in the footsteps of Darwin, must have. So this is the third game that I will be picking up from there. So it's in the footsteps of Darwin, it is Turing Machine, and it's Miller Zoo. Those three are for sure getting from Hatchet Games. I'll reorder them. They should be holding on to them for me right now. Um, this is a cool looking one where you are drafting, I think it was, if I remember right, it's tiles. You're going around this board and grab tiles or cards, one of the two. And you're going, and then you're grabbing the ones from the different columns and trying to fulfill sets and stuff on the board. I'm not doing it justice because I'm trying to do it all from memory because I'm getting older. But, so, but yeah, it looked really cool the way it went, went and quick. And this is one that we may be able to sneak into the youth plane because it's got that cool, they're really into the science stuff. So it's got that cool scientific theme and quick gameplay. And it doesn't look like you're going to get bogged down much. Quick play time. So. Spielcraft Games. Cretaceous Rails. Compete to create the best Dino Safari Resort experience for time traveling tourists. So again, modular board, network and route building. It just kind of had some cool. Quick play mid-white Euro, Euro utilizes a dual action worker placement system, route building, resource management. So all that just sounded pretty cool for us. It's a demo. Why not check it out? Um, expansion for Four Glory. Four Glory is a gladiatorial deck building game, but again, if it's gladiatorial, we're fighting each other, even though it's deck building. We like Hero Realms. We like Sh Shards of Infinity, but we really don't like many others that we're like fighting each other and trying to kill each other like that. Strange Machine Games. It's a Robotech game. We don't like Robotech, so we put as not interested. Studio H. Um, an expansion for Ultra. We don't have Ultra. It seems like one of those, like, kick you when you're down, 
co-op games, so that's why we really have no interest necessarily in grabbing Ultra. Valbara. This one we love. This one you should get. Um, we have an unboxing and we have a playthrough on the channel of this one. We actually played this with the youth over the weekend and they loved it. And they're like, I want to play that again. For those of you who have played Libertalia, it's got a very similar mechanic. Basically, everyone's going to choose a card, put it face down in front of them. Everyone reveals. Those cards have numbers on them. Whoever's got the lowest number triggers the ability on their card and then takes one of the cards from the middle that's got scoring on it. You take it, you score it immediately. The really cool thing that this game does is all of the cards have these different backs. It's got the symbols that you're playing with in different orders, and that's the tiebreaker. So if we both play a two, we look at the thing on the deck, go on our way down. Whoever comes first is the first one to do it. Really cool, quick, simple way of doing tiebreakers. No looking around or trying to figure out other stuff. Really quick playing, really simple. Varium, another one unboxing and played through with me and the bride. Another one where two-player um, experience doesn't really add much clutter or clog to the game. You use two dominoes, put them together, form coordinates on the board, take the stuff to score in a variety of ways. That is the very basic of it, but that's good enough that you can kind of understand it. But this is another one that, that I feel is a pretty safe one to get that you'd probably enjoy. I was worried about the analysis paralysis for the bride because she does take a while sometimes on turns. Somehow this one just clicked for her. She didn't take that long trying to decipher the coordinates or anything. So I was pleasantly surprised on that one. Studio Midhall, Beast. So this is a one versus many. One person plays a beast. The other people play the hunters trying to find the beast. We don't play those types of games. Not interested. Thunderworks games, stash looting your vault in this card game of clever manipulation. So it seemed kind of cool. It's got an auction bay and didn't seem overly bad with that, but I read the rules. The two player one, I just having a hard time wrapping my head around it with the rule book. Maybe in person it'd be different, but if it's got a weird two player variant, then we usually shy away from that because we want just a crisp, clean experience when we play it. Wise Wizard Games, Kapow, 1 and 2. We actually have one coming any day now when FedEx decides to deliver my package. This is a 1 to 2 player superhero fighting game. One person's a hero, one person's a villain. You're going to be rolling dice behind a screen, secretly putting them on your board, revealing, and then fighting each other. This also has dice that you can change the faces of. It's fully customizable. You pop them off and put other faces on to try and make better rolls. Seemed like a cool theme, cool mechanic, cool components. Hopefully I get my hands on them soon. But Kapow 1 and 2. Um, so based on how I like Kapow 1, we might be interested in Kapow 2. So that was the initial list. I got a notification. What do we got? The Gen Con 2023 preview has one new item today. Nifty. Yeah, I'm following that one too. We're not going to Gen Con, but this way I can at least see what games are coming out and being previewed there. Let's just go back and like make sure nothing got snuck in, recently added. Nope. All right, so again, that is the Gen Con, or the Origins Game Fair 2023 preview list. I'm Board Game Geek. That is the list as of 8.30 on Thursday, June 15th. If anything else gets added, maybe I'll put up on Twitter like, hey, this got added, didn't cover in the video, here's what I think of it. If you are going to Origins, maybe I'll see you. If you see this face, say hi. Um, if there again, if there's something on here that I covered that you definitely want us to get, hit me up before Thursday, the twenty second, right? Yep, today's the fifteenth, so the twenty second, twenty third. Let me know what for one of those days, and I'll see what I can do and we'll see about getting it to the channel. Until next time, I am the groom. This is a Magners that I am drinking. This was the Origins Game Fair 2023 preview list on Board Game Geek. Have a good rest of your day.